Hello, 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 everyone. How are you? Hope you're having an incredible, incredible day and may peace be upon you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching my show. Yes, I can with me, your host, Dr. Izdiha Jamil. I'm a media and publicity expert. And today I have the fabulous, the high performing, the trailblazer, and Jenny Umbrid, who is a leadership, holistic leadership expert woman's empowering advocate and also a number one international best-selling author with a recent book, Crop, Corporate Dropout. So Anjani, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. That is fabulous. I'm so excited to talk to you. I've been waiting for this. And Jenny and I have been planning for this. And Jenny's in Australia. I'm in California. So that's a huge, the last time we met, it was early in the morning for me and midnight for Anjani. So now it's like, the, almost the opposite is late noon to me and early morning for um, Anjani. And today, Anjani and I, we're going to be talking about the East Meet West leadership tips and best practices that any leader can take from us today because um, I feel that the leadership um, mantra, the leadership principle has been a little bit in terms of how it was outlined by a particular uh, gender uh, by white males. So I think that it is time for a more holistic, a softer, feminine, but still powerful approach on how leaders should be seen and heard. So Anjani, let's, let's get started because you've been, you've been in the corporate world for many, many years. You were uh, a lawyer or a solicitor, however, like, what, what, is it a lawyer that you call in Australia? Yeah, so yes. it's a lawyer oh. here and a solicitor in England, but you, you were in the corporate world, a lawyer for many, many years. But then there was a point uh, a few years back, you started to transition to coaching and empowerment and being an advocate for people's voices. Was there in time when your transition or during your corporate time that you see that, hang on a minute, this is the leadership that I want to lead and I want others to know that kind of transition or is it just happened, um, this part of leadership just, just came along as you transition your uh, career? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, for me, how it happened was I was completely in the dark. You know, mm -hmm. for me, I grew up in a working class family mm -hmm. and I wanted to better myself. I wanted to, you know, trailblaze in my life. I wanted to, to you know, change the world. Mm. And I thought that being a lawyer, I could do that. And yeah. I ended up being surrounded by, it was a very male dominated industry mm -hmm. at the time less so now but still quite yeah and so it was very white men in suits and the patriarchal way of a hierarchy you know this hierarchy of where the boss you're the underling you do as i say i put as much pressure on you as i can and mm -hmm. see if you bend or break <laughs> that I is work. not a best way to like <laughs> oh my god yes but that's that was the environment that I worked in it was it was usually typically all men and that mm -hmm. would be my clients as well as my colleagues um yeah. and also the people on the other side of the deals that I was negotiating so I remember once I would I went into a room um there were 30 people around a table they were all male Mm -hmm. I was the only woman and I came with my junior who mm -hmm. was male and mm -hmm. everyone got up and shook my junior's hand first thinking mm -hmm. I was the secretary and right. so yeah <laughs> and so I basically was the only you know I was the only woman I was the only woman in a very male dominated industry and so mm -hmm. I ended up you know, becoming like a man, becoming like that. And I didn't know there was a different way to lead. So I mm. tried to fit in to that mm -hmm. way of leading. Mm -hmm. I had no reference for any other way of leading. There were no women in positions of power when I was in corporate law. Mm -hmm. And the, the ones that I knew were in p positions of power, they were leading from a very masculine energy, you know, right. so... So there wasn't a difference, even though the gender was different, the the quality of leadership, which is what we're talking about here, was mm -hmm. the same. And, mm -hmm. you know, 
we we all was right we were raised in that culture that's the western culture and it was only when i took myself off to india because i basically burnt out and i had right. no other option i tried traditional medicine it didn't work so i had to find alternative ways to heal what was going on with me mm -hmm. and heal my mental state my emotional state and my physical state I took mm -hmm. myself off to india and i trained with many masters Mm -hmm. um, through many traditions and through that training I became well again I found my purpose and mm -hmm. I recovered my mental health my emotional mm -hmm. health my physical health and so the work that I do now is I bring those wisdoms from the east that I learned mm -hmm. It took me years and years and years you know decades of training with these masters and I bring mm -hmm. that into practical wisdom for the people that I work with, for the leaders, so that they can start to bring this Eastern influence, more holistic way of leading, which is more about how can I serve others? Right. How can I serve the planet? How can I serve people? How can I serve my family? How can I serve my community with my business, with my work, with my career? So it's inclusive. So it's mm -hmm. profit and people and planet. It's all three together. So we're not dropping profit. We're not dropping that, but we're balancing it out with mm -hmm. people and planet. And that's what's missing in our leadership today, I think, anyway. Absolutely. Because I remember one of the books that I read from... Brian Tracy, if I, if I remember, <laughs> we're taking a jab at him. Poor guy, he's probably coughing, like, you know, thinking of it. But I remember that him saying that you got to work longer, you got to work harder, you got to, you know, you got to do the extra miles, 10 miles from people. And I did that, um, you know, because it was, you know, he was someone who was in power and the same with you. And, you know, because you mentioned that you had to, like, how much pressure can I put to this person till she bends or the break and I and I you and I both did that and it completely ruined my mental health it completely ruined my health it completely ruined my relationship with my family the, the reason I created um work from home and created an online business because I want to spend time with my family but the 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 concept of working absolutely we have to work really hard to get what we want because you know that's part of the commitment but to do it longer and harder and more uh, there's so many kind of like how much can 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 you go for before breaking up now in your experience and Jenny when you're working in that culture that is very very male dominated um like it, like you had that 30 men and just you was it like a place where you feel that one of the little trigger or the sign that you feel out of alignment with like kind of like who you are being as a woman or as the voice or even even in your in your leadership style you probably have to be in the suit like you know box cut suit or the dress or what have you not you no way you could go in jeans with those people but you feel like one of the things that was um, out of alignment is probably your voice being heard or the style or the way you are being greeted or the way that, that the, the leadership that you want to bring in as a woman was missing yes and what i discovered was it was nothing outside of me it was no mm -hmm tool or strategy outside of me it's what was going on inside of me right let me explain if I'm going to speak in front of people and I want my voice to be heard or if I'm going to write a book and I want my mm -hmm. my you know book to be read and and understood then I have to be in alignment with my message mm -hmm. and so I had to understand, I first of all had to discover who I was because I'd outsourced who I was. I'd pretended to be, to mm -hmm. fit in. And so with the training that I had, I started to discover who I really was and what my voice was. And it was, mm. and it was about changing my internal energy, changing my self-esteem, changing the energy that was sitting inside of me so that I could be confident in speaking up and speaking out mm -hmm. and actually be confident in wearing jeans and going into a corporate environment and knowing I will still be heard and not disregarded. So when mm -hmm. we believe 
that we have to be a certain way to fit in, then we do have to be a certain way to fit in. But if we believe that we can be unconventional and be and fit in and be heard, then that's what will manifest to ourselves. That's what we'll discover. So it's all about what's going on internally, what my mm. mind is thinking, what my emotions are doing, how am I feeling about myself, what I'm putting out there, mm. and then how do I align with or resonate with what, what is really meaningful and purposeful to me. So that's, that's the skill, that's a holistic leadership skill. What's going on in me that isn't resonating, that isn't making me happy, that isn't fulfilling me, and going in and dealing with that inside of me. I call it doing an inside job. Yeah. So that's the piece that's missing, the holistic piece. It's all right having everything outside of you, but it's you that has to do the speaking. It's you that has to do the training. It's you that has to mm -hmm. lead the crowd. And so if there's something missing in you, then it's not going to come across. There's a gap there. There's a blind spot. And so I help people recognize, get clear on what blind spot is going on internally mm -hmm. so that they can fix it and then come as a whole, right, mm -hmm. to anything that they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's kind of like this alignment within you, your mind, your heart. I remember a time when I was doing an internship at a company, there were two bosses, one a lady boss, one a male boss. That male boss would always be shouting and screaming at everybody so whenever he walks in you can imagine everybody's on eggshell because you don't know what what's going to happen you're going to be shouted at you're going to be doing that um that but but kind of like i wanted to kind of bring that in in terms of yes you can absolutely be who you are who you're meant to be that's alignment for you but how can you be that and still have a connection or you still build a bridge you're still connecting you're still having that warm you still have the respect but the commitment of the people around you because it takes i mean that, that obviously whatever that that boss says like everybody would do but people just like oh my god i can't stand it anymore and do this everybody's on shell you can see the moral goes down whenever he's in the office so how can you as a leader kind of have that being who you are being unapologetic about who you are what matters to you your principles emotion your heart your soul and have a team around you that is coherent to your principles and values i love that question and here's why thank you mm -hmm. because so many people so many of us believe that we have to toe the line we have mm -hmm. to, if there's a dictator in the house and they're <laughs> yeah. mean and aggressive, then we have to do their bidding in order to be safe, in order to keep our job, in yes. order to have a be accepted, mm -hmm. all of those things. And that's, that's the very thing that holds us in mm. that power struggle. So it's mm -hmm. a big power game. And yeah. so... The only way out of that is to empower ourselves. We have to get to a place where we let go of needing to please other people. Mm -hmm. We also have to let go of our hatred of the others, our judgment of the other, and our strong negative opinions of the other. We have to kind of mm -hmm. let them go because mm -hmm. we have to understand that the, the only thing that we can change is ourself, our response mm -hmm. to someone else. We can yeah. never change another person. But here's the really good news that most people don't know of. And here's a secret I'm going to let you in on. When we change what's going on inside of us, how we think, how we feel about someone or something, then the other person or situation gets a free ride and changes too. So I'll give you an example. I used to have a boss and he was very much old school boss. You know, right. he would literally say women belong in the kitchen. I don't <laughs> know why this woman is here as our lawyer. Mm. He said it in front of me. Mm -hmm. And so naturally I had a dislike for this man yeah. and I feared him 
and I mm-hmm. tried to win his his attention, his approval, and I never could, and I never felt good enough with him, mm-hmm. never. Then I started learning about these practices, about becoming, you know, tapping into my own internal power, believing mm-hmm. in myself, believing in who I am, changing my mind about myself, changing my mm-hmm. mind about him too, and having compassion for him, understanding that he's just following the culture that he was raised in the time that he was raised in. He's not trying to personally attack me. He's just being him. It's got nothing to do with me. Realizing his stuff's got nothing to do with me. Mm. And as I practice this, letting him go, letting go of what he said, holding it more lightly, not taking it personally, seeing it objectively rather than personally. He literally had a personality transplant. And I remember one morning after a few weeks of doing this internal power building practice, after a few weeks, he always had to walk past my office to get to his office. He stopped, never stopped. He never looked at me. He would just walk straight to his office. He stopped at my office, looked in my office, tapped on the window, and I nearly had a heart attack. I was like, oh, God, I'm in (laughs) real trouble. (laughs) It was my instant reaction but I gathered myself and he said, you know, come to my office. I went to his office, says, shut the door. And I was like, Oh God, what's he going to say? Yeah. And he said, I've got a problem. Mm. He said to me, um, things aren't going well in my relationship at home mm-hmm. and I want some advice. Mm. And he asked me my advice. Right. I didn't do anything to him. I didn't say anything to him, but he had a personality change because I changed my vision of him, my vision of myself, I changed what I could about me that then got reflected in him. You see, the secret is everything we see outside of us is simply a reflection of what's inside of us. And when we really get that, when we really understand that, we become very powerful. So that's the feminine leadership. We don't compete. You know, there's no hierarchy. We don't have to beat someone into submission we are generous we are empowered ourselves, and then from that position we can empower others we can amplify other people's voices we can ask not tell we can share we can bring in um, a moral compass and a conscience that is beautiful and it is that nurturing side as us women right we naturally have men are have the protective side that is natural for them because they're like you know protective side of taking care of the family the need of the tribe but at the same time our leadership comes from the womb comes from the nurturing so that's why god gave us the ability to have children because our ability to to nurture and hold that um, that 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 baby for nine months and then have the baby whether it's by c-section or with it by natural birth it is a life and death situation when you're about to have a baby and I feel that that is something that for things to change I must change first and it's the same principle that I feel that we can take into relationships because you and your employer is a relationship or you and yourself is a relationship because that is like the, the deal maker for saving a marriage because often oh he did see that or she did she that but what you're saying on Johnny is that hang on a minute let me bring it in let me bring the focus into me how am I behaving what can I change how just like you said like how what what is your perception of seeing that guy he's more than likely operating at a blueprint that he was already been like printed on since he was since he was a child so I want to know what are if you can give us some practical tips on what is this um internal work that you can share maybe is it like a meditation or is it like a mantra or is it like a prayer or is it like a kind of um, exercise or like a stretching I know um in India yoga is one of the things and yoga has been um certain positions uh, coupled with uh, with breathing coupled with um, a certain things can help to shift the energy within so if you can give us a couple of tips that you know people can uh, start practicing yes and it's interesting hearing what you say because most western people's 
conceptions of doing some inner work or you know working on themselves or self-growth oh I have to go and learn to meditate or I have to start doing yoga but you can't it doesn't work it's not practically applicable when it comes to leading running a business changing a relationship it's not practical enough so we Mm. can't practice yoga and then expect that to change my relationship at home it's a mismatch right so yeah so I have one real simple way that your listeners can make start making this change and start what I call insourcing their power Mm -hmm. that is practicing Mm self-awareness so awareness is different to focus in the West, we're taught to focus, focus, doing the job, get the job done, tick the box, yes. focus, use your intellect and focus. Whereas in the East, it's all about awareness and more particularly self-awareness. Mm-hmm. We don't, we are not trained in self-awareness in the West. There's nothing at school, MBAs, leadership programs that train mm-hmm. us in self-awareness. So this how we start by doing this is by a simple process of checking in and all that is is to just stop take a few deep breaths Mm -hmm. and then check in with yourself by asking yourself what am i thinking right now Mm. how am i feeling right now Mm -hmm. what sensations are running through my body right now Mm. and you will know you will get data Mm-hmm. information vital information am i thinking something healthy or unhealthy typically i would bet a million dollars 10 million dollars anyone checking in with your thoughts right now is going to be negative mm-hmm. because that's the negative thought you know it's the it's the thought loops that go on yeah. in our western culture so mm-hmm. what am i thinking is it negative okay now i have more awareness How am I feeling? Do I feel joyful and happy and exuberant or am I exhausted? Mm -hmm. Because with that information, we're more likely we have, we're better equipped to then start to empower ourselves. In other words, we're more likely to go, I'm tired. I need a rest. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking something negative or I'm insecure. So I can change that. Ah, Mm -hmm. I see now. It, see, it brings to light the things that are holding us back. And the things that are holding us back are our own thoughts and beliefs, our own feelings, and how our body feels. That they're, they're the three things that hold us back. And so when we tap into that, when we get more of it, when we gain awareness, self-awareness, we are more likely to naturally support ourselves. And then the other work I do is giving you strategies and tools mm-hmm. to yourself but the one key thing the one key takeaway is self-awareness it's a game changer self-awareness is 75 percent the way there to transformation 75 percent self-awareness that is like huge isn't it um and shiny because often we always on the outside is is the blame game it's like that 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 you know that person this or the, the neighbor the cat the dog the rock like it's all about all that um, outsourced influences, but actually, if you bring it in, for example, if you in the state of anger, this is one of the things I do. If I'm in the state of anger, then I wouldn't, then I would like, you know, calm myself. I would not speak when I'm in state of anger because the things that come up from my mouth, it's going to be really hurtful either to my husband or my children or the people around me. So I would just like rather be in silence for that moment. Let me just process what I need to process and then give up uh, and, and then you know and then bring my center myself back in but self-awareness is hardly being talked about in western leadership at least not certainly from the books that I've heard from Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, or Sihab Iker, the leadership um, expert um, Grant Cardone is always about the doing right it's always yeah. about the, the tick off the boxes. Um, so now, Anjani, in terms of leadership and the East and Mr. West, I know coming from the East, family life is pretty important to us. Uh, but the Western is more individualistic. 
Um, like look back home, like we would just invite for eat. We would invite like the whole neighborhood. Like people just come, enjoy the food, have an open people. Okay, just come over to my house. Like, and suddenly we have thirty people. But like, don't worry, just come over. You know that kind of like uh, uh, so, so social and family relationship. But over here in the Western world, it's completely completely the opposite. Everybody is very like individualistic or just. Um, but so how can we kind of bridge that? Because it can feel really lonely as someone who's advocating for something. It can feel really lonely when, um, you know, you just like here and then after that you're off, like you don't invite people to your home. Not that you need to invite people to your home, but it's just like business, whereas you, it's more than just that. So how can we kind of build the bridge to soften things out, um, to make people feel at least at home or welcome um, in our environment. It's such an important thing that we have to understand in the West because in our Western culture, when we talk about soft skills mm -hmm. um, or nurturing each other or connecting with each other, Western culture um, will label this as weakness. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring the message today that this is where our power lies. Mm. And the reason why it's got labeled as a weakness is because those in power know that it's powerful and mm -hmm. that if we bring this power of nurturing and connecting and collaborating and opening our hearts, then mm -hmm. we become very powerful because it's magnetic mm -hmm. and it's very attractive and it's, a, it's, a, it's how we build success. And so it's really important that we understand these qualities are not weak. They are, in fact, our power. Mm -hmm. And the patriarchal system in the West, it's slowly changing. You know, the matriarchy is coming in more and more and more. And we have to understand that the patriarchy is terrified of the matriarchy because it knows <laughs> that those skills of nurturing and connection nourishment collaboration that's where the real power is and mm. so when people understand that they're more likely to want to embrace it otherwise they go yeah it's nice but it's fluffy I don't want to open my heart I don't want yeah. to practice love I've got a job to do I got a yeah. job to do but but I from my personal experience and working with clients over the last decade and a half it's only when we are able to bring the intellect, the head with the heart, bring the heart together with it. So we have intellect, we're sharp, we're focused, but we also have powerful awareness, strong connections, um, a powerful team around us who all feel included, you know, a flattened hierarchy, so a flat structure. These are all the tools, these are all the qualities that bring about real, lasting, sustainable, meaningful power, meaningful leadership for us, our teams, our clients, the world. That is beautiful and absolutely spot on. The, the, the ingredients that come together, the, the heart, the mind, the soul, the intellect, the family, um, obviously it all comes together. We, it's really hard to chop one part off from us and say, this is just, uh, this is me just at the moment, but actually no, I'm a mom, I'm also a wife, I'm also, can be the cook, can be the cleaner, can be the nurse, can be the doctor, like, you know, can be the, the, the leader, whatever it is, but absolutely bring it on. And I know it's a little bit scary to, to open it up, right? It is a bit scary, what if, People's gonna judge me, come to my home, what they're gonna judge me, gonna judge my children. But when you you spot on in saying that when you show that vulnerability, that's when they're gonna fall in love with you more. Because not many people are willing to pull down the curtain. Um, that's why you see politicians never invite people to their home, or at least the, the people who are in circle that know <laughs> what what they are like. But but in Malaysia, where where I'm from, the, the king would have an open house on Eid, where people would just go to the castle, and he he would uh, he would have food to fit the people. I think it's kind of like so that to me is something common because I've seen the king or the prime minister himself doing that. I think that we have a 
beautiful, beautiful conversation in the, the East meeting, the West, kind of the leadership, the nurturing, the self-awareness. If anything, self-awareness is a secret to like, for things to change, I must change first. And always starts um, when the night. So Anjani, final question before we wrap up. What is one fun thing that you love to do that nobody knows about? Oh, you're outing me now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is it the dance move, Anjali? Is it the party that you go to? <laughs> you know, what I really enjoy is um, hip hop dancing. Ah! Which um, and modern jazz, modern jazz, uh, which I don't put on my resume, but that's something I, that I love to do. And I'm also um, learning to play piano, and I play harmonium, and I sing um, kirtan. So I, I create kirtan music and kirtan songs. So it's devotional songs, and it, that practice actually opens my heart and brings me joy. It puts me in that flow of joy and mm -hmm. exuberance. And so those are the things I practice that I don't necessarily lead with but um people can feel that in my energy and you know happy to share that happy to be vulnerable and share that because that's exactly what we're talking about it's like yes i can be a really successful businesswoman mm. and i can also play kirtan music and play harmonium and dance modern jazz you know in my in my early 50s i can do i can be all of that and when yeah. i'm you know when i'm assured in that then other people love that too absolutely and that was so like so fun right to have that that space because um you know I, I wouldn't I wouldn't know that you would have the movement but I could feel something when you move your body oh did you like use it the dancing that people don't know the jazz and the piano playing so um which is something we have a common because I I play the piano I'm classically trained pianist at Bishop Fun Beethoven Tchaikovsky um, Mozart and I was in the choir as well Oh, so perhaps one day when we meet you and you and I, we're going to be like, let's go and have a band, <laughs> which is really fun. And that's exactly what you're saying, that that's, that's part of you as well. And it's okay to share that part of you, that, whether you call it the silly part or not. So I have a feeling we know how to party, right? We know how to crank up the party. I may not dance, but... I sure can wiggle some things out, and <laughs> that would be for sure. So, Anjani, thank you so much for joining me in this conversation on the East meets the West of kind of the captaincy, the kind of leadership, the kind of nurturing that the world needs right now. And thank you so much for hanging out with me. For those of you who would love to share your voices on prestigious platforms around the world, whether being a best-selling author against social media, TV, magazine, Forbes, or TED, check out isbihajamil.com. And then, Johnny, before we wrap up, um, what's one final, final word from you that you feel that uh, can be impactful in touching people's hearts from this conversation? I would say you all know what you need to do in terms of you. It's really important that you trust your inner guidance. Trust, if you're not happy, trust that it is time to move on. If you're looking for something new, if you're looking to overcome a challenge, trust that you've got everything inside of you that you need to get to where you're going. You just have to have the courage to look in. So look in today and ask yourself. Beautiful. Trust and courage. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening. This is your host, Dr. Isdiha Jamil. Tell yourself, yes, I can. And so it is done. And Jania, let's say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Bye.